Hi, welcome to another episode of Spit Takes. I am Jens Anderson, aka Spittle, your host, and this is my co-host, my lovely wife, Ellen. Hey. So we are going to go over uh, some episodes of, let's see, Constantine right now. Uh, great couple of episodes. We actually have two to cover. Um, the first one being the follow-up to the uh, mid-season finale, where mm-hmm. Constantine rescues this baby from one of the Sisters of Eve and is shot by a nun <laughs> in the gut and left to, for dead against this creature called the Invonche. And Constantine has to find a way to get out of all this, which he does really well, I thought. Take me! Come into me! God damn you! Take me! Take me! Um, I liked how it opened up. Basically, that first episode is him getting possessed by a demon in order not to, to get killed by another demon. Yes. So it seems to, to be possessed by demons often. Yes. <laughs> Actually, has he been possessed by a demon yet? No. There's definitely been demon possession on the show. That's true, but I think he's got a history of that, kind of even before that show, they hint at. Right. That's for sure. So, um, he, he basically gets possessed by a demon and starts murdering people all over Mexico, gets thrown into prison. Um, I definitely liked how he got arrested and basically called it self-defense, uh, but it really was him going mental and the demon coming out. Later it manifests in the, in the prison as well. He becomes like the leader in the prison, takes over from the, the gang that, that is, uh, formally leading in the prison and sort of running things. And Pe- Pedro was in it. I know. Oh, free Pedro. That was, I think that was one of the most interesting things was Pedro Vote in for it. Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Pedro can get you what you need in prison. If you vote for me, all of your wildest dreams will come true. That's <laughs> basically what I got out of that. I'm so distracted by dog spit. It's awful. Oh, I know. But if there was a little bit of me, besides when I saw uh, the actor who was Pedro in Napoleon Dynamite, there's a little part of me that wanted Constantine to be in a, in a Mexican wrestling mask. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that would be good, too. Like, yeah. Lucha Libre yes. style? Yes. Like, when the demon comes out, it manifests in a Lucha Libre Yeah, and he's like, mask. and he's in, like, a super tight spandexy 1980s. <laughs> Nacho! He could be like, Constantine! You know, I figure be because good. his, you know, his wardrobe's already pretty tight, it's got the... The, the white shirt, the skinny tie, the, the trench coat that's a little bit too small, that, that this spandexy 1980s um, Mexican wrestling outfit would have been awesome. So Manny the Angel gets pretty pissed at him because he turns to the dark side to save himself, right? To the darkness, and you know Constantine's like, "Well, I didn't see heaven, you know, doing anything about it." And he was like, "But you didn't even ask," which really annoyed me. Because, like, Manny the whole time is always saying, like, I can't interfere, I can't interfere. So why would Constantine be like, you know what, let me try the Heaven Hotline. Because they've been oh so helpful in Johnny on the Spot in the past. Oh, yeah, because he also likes praying. Yeah. (laughs) Basically, you didn't ask me was, you didn't pray for it, you didn't pray for me. You didn't reach out and ask God. Right. So, yeah, he was, he it was kind of snobby. But Manny was pulling for him in the end and (laughs) was happy that he got the, the... And you know what I didn't understand? Like, well, Manny, I thought... Manny's kind of hung up on rules. He is. So, um, he likes to stick to the rules. You know, Constantine is all about, um, you know, not co- coloring within the lines. Mm-hmm. You know, he's all over the place. He'll mm-hmm. do what he has to do. Manny, Manny's more wants to, uh, you know, stick with the rules because he kind of has to. Um, and eventually, you know, not eventually, but every once in a while you see him kind of, you know, going over that edge every once in a while to help... Uh, all in all, John. a good episode, for yeah. sure. Um, I enjoyed it very much. I'm, you know, I, I thought they would deal with that storyline a little longer with him being possessed, but they they got rid of it pretty quickly. Um, yeah, possession's pretty exhausting. <laughs> can't keep it up for long. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tough. <laughs> um, I try it all the time, and I can only I can only keep it going for maybe an hour at a time. But, you know, that explains a lot. I thought you were hangry. I'm hangry. Like, really, you're possessed by a demon. <laughs> yes, it's the hunger demon. The hunger. <laughs> <laughs> El chocolate. <laughs> nice. So, um, good episode overall. I thought it was I thought it was really good. Um, and then there was this last week's episode. Which was, like, freaking amazing. Um, so let's talk about that. 
because we learned so much in that episode and saw a new awesome DC character showed up, right? Right. So first of all, Felix Faust shows up. And Felix Faust is a major part in our game, actually. He's part of the Black Adam storyline and... Um, you know, he's, uh, Felix Faust is this, like, really, you know, in the DC history, he's, like, a really old, ancient sorcerer, um, who has been trading in souls for a really long time. And I think they touched on that in the show. Oh, yeah, totally. But it was a little different. Like, he was sort of, like, always in other magician's shadow, the character on the show. Right. Always, like, kind of an underling or a lackey, but he sort of is spinning it that, like, they were riding on his shoulders like he was the one that that actually brought all these magic users to power um and so he but now he's struck out on his own Mm -hmm. because he's cracked something that no other wizard has been able to crack how to separate the soul from the human body and like become a soul collector so in the comics he's been doing that for a very long time but in the show he just sort of was recently doing that um i don't know who the what the actor's name is that played that but i've seen him before i know and i was thinking the same thing i'm like i know that guy but you know what i couldn't get past like all i kept seeing in in my head was when i would search for a name or what i've seen him in before was gargamel like he he just felt he felt like (laughs) it was the eyebrows yeah something he he kind of had like the the feelers i wanted him to like start chasing down some smurfs some manscaping (laughs) he she was i was looking for the cat Azrael coming out i wanted him to chase some smurfs (laughs) You know, for their Smurf juice. Like, I was... I don't know what it was. Papa Smurf! <laughs> so, but he... I'll uh, get your soul. He's a good actor. I've seen him somewhere. I can't remember. We'll, we'll flash it up on the on the screen here when I... Um, during the episode and give him some credit. But he was really good. It was hard to understand him sometimes because of the vocal choices that he made, but he was really good. And so, basically, he's stealing souls from people, yeah, and he's, he's, like, massively powerful. About the vocal stuff and his choice... I don't, I didn't, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm used to our Felix Faust or what I, my, my vision of what I feel, what I think Felix Faust would sound like, but right. he was kind of like the, um, the Vic Tabak or Ed Asner <laughs> of magicians. Like he was just kind of, he was a little kind of just like a little dirty and rough and, and that's not kind of how I imagine Felix Faust. Would be. He was doing some nasty stuff during the episode too. He was like sewing the eyes shut on a head, like a severed human head yeah. and. But he was super powerful. Like, Constantine oh, was totally. afraid of him mm-hmm. the whole time. Um, and then the coolest part about all this, though, was Chaz's kid gets stolen. This, his, her soul gets stolen. Mm-hmm. So that's why they have this huge vested interest in stopping Felix Faust, because Chaz's daughter is, her soul was sucked out of her body. Which is cool, because, um, you know, I, I think I was on my iPad at the time. <sighs> Which I do. I like to multitask, but um, you know, I was like ninety nine. Multitask. <laughs> it's solo task. When she's on the iPad and you try and ask her a question, it's like whoop whoop. Hi, six seventy. Can you believe it? I know. I had a feeling you were gonna tell me that. I know it. <laughs> Thank you for choosing Popeyes. This is Cassie. How may I help you today? Thank you. Oh, thank you. See, now look what she's doing. She's multitasking. Hi, sir. You have a good day. Unbelievable. She did all that at once. <laughs> yes, sir. Multitask. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. A man, a man can't do it. Men, like, look at me. I'm pulling away. I got my flashes on. I got my credit card and a straw, and my wallet's still in my lap right here. She did. I need to just pull over and calm down and get organized. But, hey, um, talking to you, talking to you. And I want to you. make sure, because I watched 99% of the show, um, is that, you know, when I, when I saw the, the girl and she dropped, um, and all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, this is Chaz's daughter. It's his home. We're right. going to learn about Chaz. Right. So I got pretty excited about that. And that was cool. So I guess way back in the day, the reason Chaz can resurrect the way that he does was um, he and Constantine were at a bar and he was drunk. Constantine was drunk. Well, Chaz was drunk and was going to drive home. Constantine did some mumbo jumbo to like right. clear his sobriety, but it didn't work. Oh, John right? Constantine drunk. At least, yeah, right. What a surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Smoking, drinking, whoring it up—that's pretty much Constantine. Um, so he uh, he cast this spell. It doesn't seem to have any effect, but then Constantine leaves with this bird, the bird, 
the lady he was picking up. And Chaz is there. This band comes out, starts to play, and the whole place goes on fire. 47 people are killed, including Chaz. Mm. And, but he wakes up in the hospital, totally healed. And Constantine explains that he, like, on a goof, sort of cast this spell that Merlin made up, where if he casts it on Merlin's, or Arthur's knights, and if the knight ever died, along with other lesser knights, the, the main knight's soul would absorb the lesser knight's soul and would come back to life and have extra lives. So it was like this, like, life-generating spell. Jesus Christ! So Chaz ended up having, he's basically got, right. he's like super cat. He's like got 47 lives, right? Yes. And it, yeah. And one thing I, one thing I really, really like is that um, when, when he was talking about Merlin's magic, um, which you would think was, you know, if you had to talk about like good and evil, you would per, put Merlin more on the good side. Because then you think of Morgana, who, was it Morgana? Uh, Morgan Le Fay. Morgan Le Fay um, is, is bad. And John Constantine, um, at least in, in, from what I've seen on the show so far, what they've gone into, is usually delving into like the dark arts of magic. And so this was cool. He was kind of going to this more like noble, um, you know, yeah, some good, kind of chivalry good magic, magic in, right? In, instead of like, I'm going to do this demon or I'm going to do this dark voodoo spell or something. Although, like was it really good magic? I mean, I was thinking about it, right? It's like, hey, knight, you serve your king, but when you die, your soul will go to heaven. No, 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 not anymore. Now when you die, your soul will be sucked up into this other knight who we think is way cooler than you so that he can keep going. But you, you're not even going to go to heaven. You're going to be fuel now. You are now soul food for this other knight to kind of keep crusading. What? I like soul food. <laughs> well, yeah, but it just seemed kind of like, wow, that's kind of messed up. I mean, yeah. that's kind of messed up. So, but it, uh, the origin was great. Oh, why do you have to put a, such a damper on <laughs> I'm it? Sorry, yes, <laughs> chiller. That's me. I'm the the killer of dreams. Oh, uh, it went into like really cool forty seven lives into soul eater. Well, now, it, but I think for the night thing, it was kind of kind of weird. And but I'm just saying, it's it's you know, all magic has a price, right? Right. And that definitely, it, sometimes the price is at the end expense of other people and that spell definitely seemed like it was mm -hmm. and so he's chaz is basically trying to honor all these people whose souls he has uh, by helping out constantine and stopping evil in the world right so pretty cool but it drove him up away from his family and his wife and his daughter are estranged from him and so but he was going to visit her and that's when this felix faust thing happened and we just learned so much about chaz and chaz was badass chaz seemingly kills faust at the end by blowing himself and faust up with a grenade because right. he basically tricks Faust. Hey, I'll give you all 32 of my souls left. But then he kills himself. Now I have 31. I have 31 souls if you release my daughter's soul. Yeah, this is a man who's not afraid of dying. Correct. <laughs> so, I would anyway, be afraid cool of the stuff. pain of dying. Like, that would be really creepy to me. To have to, like, die and then wake up somewhere creepy, like a morgue. Uh, you know what, though? <laughs> I would rather go through the pain of dying and wake up somewhere than just not wake up yeah. at all. That would be I wonder better. how many lives he has left. Uh, so, 30. I couldn't remember. Thirty. I know it was. So he he says I have thirty two souls. Right. Because he he had forty seven, which means he's died fifteen times. Then he has to slit his throat to convince Faust that he um, has these souls. Right. And he dies on the floor, and then he resurrects, and Faust is like, "Oh, you're no joke." So now he has thirty one souls, including his own, to trade. So and then he blows himself up. Right. So now he's down to thirty. So he's now down to thirty. And so even from 30. now on, we need the Chaz death count. Right. Well, think about this. They have to be careful. I know. Like they can't. They, they can't have selective. him die every episode because right. then by season three, if they make it that far, right, he ain't gonna be around <laughs> anymore. So they have to be a little careful, unless they treat it like the doctor, where they get to the thirteenth regeneration and they do some bullshit reset button. You got uh, thirteen more regenerations. John Constantine's like, oh, guess what? Jumbo, jumbo, flippity flappity <laughs> floop. You're good. <laughs> Forty-seven more. <laughs> Could happen. It's true. Let's hope they get that far. And but have anyway, to deal with I that vote problem. do the Chaz death count. They're, they've actually the show's fate, I guess, is um, looking better than it was before. So they they they're now going to decide what they're going to do with it like later on. So you I think that and the episodes are getting better and better and better. So I think the show's going to survive. I hope so. Yeah. 
I hope so too. I want to see some more falling and angel I, and I, awesomeness. And did you notice that in this episode he did not wear the trench coat? Yes, he did. When? He wore the trench coat when they were going to the rail yard. He I had don't it remember on. That. Uh-oh. It was like shorty trench coat too. Oh, I know. That's okay. Yeah, iPad. Believe <laughs> She did all that at once. <laughs> Multitask, thank, thank you. you. We'll see what happens anyway, next. I don't actually know what's going on, on in the next episode, but um, you know, I'm looking forward to more DC characters potentially showing up. I don't want, you know, Hellblazer has crossed paths with Swamp Thing. I don't think I want Swamp Thing to show up. I think that's just a little weird. I keep, I keep having flashbacks to the John Carpenter film. That, and I love John Carpenter. You mm. know how much I love John Carpenter. Oh, Adrian Barbeau. But that, that Swamp Thing film was ridiculous. Adrian Barbeau. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian Barbeau. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yep. Escape from New York. Best Barbeau film ever. Oh, Although, no, uh, uh, The Fog was also really good. Oh, the original Fog. The original Fog. The remake Fog is not good. The, well, I don't know if it's good or not good, but the, the original is the bomb. Yeah, Very John creepy. Carpenter. If you haven't seen John Carpenter films, you need to. Um, uh, Big Trouble in Little China, um, Prince of Darkness, The Fog... Uh, all of these are fantastic, fantastic films. Escape the from New York. Thing. The Thing. Oh my God! Do not see Escape from L.A. though. Blah! That's some ridiculousness. I don't Unless know what's going you make on it there. into a drinking game. Yeah, but then it, <laughs> every ridiculous moment. <laughs> yeah, well, you, just IV the alcohol yes. into your vein at that point. Uh, all right. Well, those are our episodes of Constantine. Looking forward to more DC characters showing up. I hope we see Dr. Fate or the Helm of Naboo get used soon. That would be pretty cool. Uh, maybe the demon Etrigan showing up would be pretty badass. Um, I would like to see some of those characters, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, actually, I'm not up on what the next episode is, but um, Constantine, awesome show. Check it out. Love the last two episodes. I give both episodes thumbs up. How about you? Me too. Definitely. Right. What are we, Siskel and Ebert now? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, too oh soon. no! Too soon? No! I love him, and I love that movie. No! <laughs> no! Bad! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, Roger Ebert. No! <laughs>love you guys thanks for tuning in thank you for uh the commentary can't wait for the next episode of constantine bye later